bought the 440 right behind you guys for next to nothing. We have no idea if it runs or anything like that. Previous owner never heard it run, he just rattle canned it Ford Blue. So what we're going to do is see if we can make it run on the trailer. So with the engine basically sitting up where it needs to be, we'll ratchet strap it down to keep it safe. I stole this janky looking ground cable to run to our battery. And then I've got a positive side running to the positive side of the starter. So what I can do is hook up our battery, cross over these two starter wires, and then spin it over to see if we actually have anything. And once we do that, we will determine where top dead center is, run our plug wires to our spark plugs. So there you see there's our positive side and again this battery cable here goes on to the battery to the positive side. Then our negative which I just basically just uh, put to an intake bolt so it would ground to the block itself. Put that on our negative side and now you'll see right down in there there's that little tiny lug right there. Once you cross those over should make the starter spin over this side going to positive battery and this side's going to that small lug. Okay, we got compression. We're missing a spark plug over here, but we do see that it spins over. Taking a loop with this transmission cooler line. I don't know if anything's in it, but I don't want to change it and shoot anything out. I've got it running. Get us some holes right here. Cut her up. Drop it in. Get a hose clamp for it. We'll be good. I just got a screwdriver sitting in number one there. You just grab it when you see it start to lift up. That way I don't get it caught in anything. Let's see if there's any hard spots. <laughs> Put your finger over that number one and tell me when you feel. Yeah, that's compression. Where's the time anymore? Right here. Did it did it quit blowing air? I think so. Let me back it up. At least get. Okay. Tell me when it quits blowing air. So what we can do now is actually pull the distributor cap and see at which cylinder that rotor is pointing. And that'll either tell us one or two things. Either it's on number one or it's 180 degrees out because for every two turns of the crank, the distributor only rotates one time. So if we pop this off, that should be number one. So that's how we'll run our plug wires. This distributor that we have is electronic ignition. And I just so happen to have this complete little harness that I made whenever I first got my charger running that I'm going to use. I'm going to ground this out. This is our ignition module. And then all of our wires that we have to just connect up. We've got our distributor plug right here. So it should be pretty simple. Just as simple as plugging everything in, hooking it to our ballast resistor, making sure we have a good ground, and hopefully it'll fire off. 
So you can see here we have hastily wired up our electronic ignition. Had to really just have it sitting on top of the ground post of the battery. So it might not work. But you can see we got all of our wires. Here's our ballast. Just chilling out of the engine. Got our jumper wire running over to our coil. And then the hot side to the battery running to the hot side of the ballast to the hot side of the coil. So to test it, see if we get any sound. Listen to the coil, see if you hear anything. Well, all I'm going to do is take the wire. Hear that? The coil's hot. Ready to fire. So also what I've done is taken this little push trigger here and run it to both sides of the starter. So you can see here, all I gotta do when I'm ready. Good enough. <laughs> At least spin it.
They got it hot. We can't put the radio cap on because we're, we didn't have a free slogan fit, so I had to grind a free slogan. It's barely got it tapped in there. That's because it, it ain't too hot. It'll be all right. Cast iron. Back pressure, baby. We had a fan on it. I ripped it, didn't I? Yeah. Well, I might as well sit on the car. I'm going to do it when I put it in the car. You saw at the very end right there, the uh, thermostat actually opened. That's what caused all that water to rush out of the radiator cap. We didn't overheat it. I checked it with the thermometer and it was around like 190, 195, which is probably what that thermostat in there is anyway. So as soon as it opened, all that water just shot out of it because the water pump was actually spinning. And all the water was cool to the touch. So I knew we didn't overheat it, but I shut it off instantly. And the reason we didn't put a cap on it was because dad actually had ram jammed a uh, freeze plug that was too big for it just so we could uh, run it just then. He, uh, he had to grind down the edges of it just to you know put it in there and then hold a place to keep water from running out. And if we had plugged that cap, it would build pressure, shoot that cap right out of there. So we left it like it was and it was fine. It ran and that's all we wanted it to do. We did it all for you guys. So I didn't touch the carburetor, didn't touch the timing, but it ran. I just turned the idle up just to see if it was any good and we revved it till it shot some flames. So it was a pretty good engine. So we'll probably use it for something down the line. You know, you can never have too many spare big blocks. Uh, Dad paid next to nothing for it. We'll probably put it in something, maybe a satellite one day, maybe a little mild cam, and that's it. You know, it doesn't really need much. You know, it's a fun little torquey engine and low miles being out of RV. It is low compression, but it'll definitely motivate some kind of vehicle, and that's all we really want to do with it. So we'll hang on to it, use it for something else, but I just wanted to show you guys and share with you that you can start an engine on a trailer, and we just, we just did it, and it was a lot of fun. But that's gonna do it for today's video. If you liked it, please leave a like down below. If you have a question for me, feel free to leave a comment, share your project to our Facebook page at the very end of the video, order your t-shirts and your stickers. I appreciate everything you guys have done for me, and I hope you guys had as much fun watching this video as I did making it. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.